Ship Captain Red Gag Stig watched, confusion writ large on his face, as the enemy arrayed their fleet in a defensive formation around the disputed colony. The colony in question had been claimed by his people, the Lufsa, some centuries prior, though never settled. It had come as a shock to them to return and find the colony a veritable hotbed of alien activity. Shock gave way to curiosity, and from curiosity to wariness. The Lufsa exploration fleet had called for military backup, and so the deep black of space was filled with the twinkling lights of man-made stars. Those poor souls trapped on the ground glanced up at the newly illuminated sky before returning to their tasks of daily survive. The fact that their fates would be decided by beings millions of miles away, acknowledged but buried deep. From deep in the stern of his ship, from the command deck, a captain watched these beings and regretted his duty. Captain Retgat had not requested the honour of leading the first possible military action against another spacefaring nation, but his service record, and more importantly, his proximity, had resulted in the dubious honour. He stood now, confused but ready, as his potential enemy arrayed themselves in a way foreign to 3,000 years of military tradition. For all that, he was confident. His ships dwarfed the enemy, both in tonnage and quantity. His soldiers were expertly trained, and should the need arise, he felt confident that it would be a short fight. Sir, we are ordered to advance upon the planet, but not to engage unless they initiate. Retgat accepted the order, nodding to his navigation's crew to begin the advance. His ship lumbered to life, engines igniting as massive rockets flared, pushing them towards the thin defensive picket. Sir, we are receiving transmissions from the enemy vessels. They are demanding something, but the translator is having difficulty. I believe they said something about fire. Have the ships moved or begun to initiate an attack formation? Redgat barked back. No, sir. They're just... waiting. Then we continue on. Let them squawk. We will reply when they show some courage or submit. Their fleet began to drift into a vague wedge ship. Red gets capital ship at the point of the formation, meant to break open any defending wall. Red gets took proud on the command deck, certain in their shielding, and the advantage of initiative. The first inkling of danger didn't hit, until damage reports began pouring from one of the smaller frigates on the wing of the formation. A garbled and panicked call rang through, stating catastrophic damage to their core systems. The transmission suddenly died, and the image indicating the location of the ship winked out of existence. Redgat didn't panic. Tell me what just happened. Did they mind the approach? Redgat asked in disgust. Mines were a known tactic, but the tool of cowards and pirates. Our scanners aren't showing anything, sir. All we can see is that there was a small surge of energy from one of the enemy ships, but nothing to indicate an enemy presence in any way. Should we slow our approach? No, damn them. They did something that cost us the lives of those soldiers and sailors. They will answer for it. There was a muted cheer at his words, and a slight swaying, as more power was poured into the engines that drove the ship closer. That enthusiasm was short-lived as more ships began to report damage that apparently had no source. A destroyer and frigate had both been crippled, while another destroyer had disappeared in a massive explosion, without even the chance to report. Retgat was now concerned. He lost half of his fleet and hadn't even engaged the enemy. Every moment brought them closer, but the cries that rang through the radio echoed all the more. And still, he had no idea what was happening. He knew he should turn back, knew that there was more at play here than he understood. And yet his pride and his fear drove him on. Pride that became courage and fear that became defiance. The capital ship was now close enough to get a visual on the enemy vessels. They had deployed some sort of long cylinder out of the bottom of their ships. As Retgat watched, the cylinder flashed, and then everything went dark. Lights flickered on as the image faded. Nervous rustling, and the noises of various bodily functions filled the space of the projection, 
and then faded as the figure of a prematurely aged general stood in front of the gathered body. The images you were just shown were the first shots of the recently concluded war between our people and the humans. A war concluded not on our terms. In the battle you just witnessed, we lost an entire fleet, nine ships, without inflicting a single casualty on the enemy. That battle was typical. It was also our first introduction to what the humans called a railgun. Basically, chunks of metal fired at near light speed. We have spent nine of the last 13 revolutions defending our territories, unsuccessfully. And we have spent the last two revelations working to understand what happened. The answer lay in human biology. The central nervous system of the typical human is massive in proportion to its body weight. Anywhere from 2 to 4%. And it is truly a marvel. It allows them to perform complicated mathematical calculations to determine how to focus their murderous intent in the most efficient manner. I am not exaggerating when I say that humans have the ability to subconsciously do calculations that strain our more accomplished mathematicians. It is in their very biology, perhaps given to them by their gods to kill from a distance. I have seen this unnatural ability, and it is unnerving, as is their attitude towards it. Whether they use their upper appendages or lower, it doesn't seem to matter. They merely need to look where they want an item to go, and to their spot it seems to fly with deadly accuracy. Their society is built around, captivated by, and accepts this ability. It has been a part of every war, every sort of sport, and is the foundation of many of their ancient traditions. And it is why we have suffered what we have suffered. There is a joke among humans that the first technological advancement came as a result of one human that wanted to stab his enemy, but that said enemy was sadly out of reach. I'm not sure I doubt it. This led to the invention of the bow and arrow, a primitive human tool. But the principle of it has been carried forward and iterated upon in beautiful brutality. The result was what they call projectile weapons. Weapons based not on the honor principles of close quarter combat, but on the ruthless efficiency of killing your enemy long before they can kill you. They are very, very good at it, and improving with each passing revolution. I had our engineers recreate one of these weapons. An exact copy in every meaningful way. We completed it nearly three revolutions prior to the end of the war. We were never able to use it. We will never be able to use it. We are biologically unequipped. We cannot do the calculations. We do not have the data to have our computers do the calculations. We have been betrayed by our very genes. I remember... I remember when I rejoined the war effort after my release. We should have sought peace after the loss of the Thundering Fleet, and after the loss of the Stablaris system. We should have surrendered when they took Gwenarius, but we were proud and foolish, and now we are subjects. And yet some are still proud and foolish and chafe under the yoke of our victorious enemies. So... You have invited me here to ask my advice on defeating the humans. Here then, honored leaders of the herd, my recommendation. Silence enveloped the great hall. Anxious silence. Fearful silence. Hated silence. Do not poke the monkeys. Do not anger them. Do not provoke them. We cannot win. As I mentioned, it seems human innovation is driven by war. So if you do something as massively idiotic as ignoring this sound advice, I would offer a request and a warning. First, please let me know when you plan on doing said idiotic thing, so that I can be on the other side of the Empire. I have fought them once, and will never, never do so again. The bent, hobbled figure made as if to leave. The silence followed again before a voice called out. And the warning, General Retgat? The general slowed, half-turned. Make sure to have a will in order, because I can guarantee that their next weapon will leave nothing but rubble of this empire. <laughs>